Martin, we continue with Easter Tide. <laughs> This week, we've got this extraordinary reading about the Good Shepherd from John chapter 10, or rather half of the Good Shepherd passage, really. So um, what do you make of it? Yeah, I'm not, it's not even quite half, is it? So it's, it's uh, 11 to 18 in mm. that chapter. And uh, I, I, so I, first of all, I start by, by going back to the, the previous verses, because right before we get to verse 11, Jesus says, I've come that uh, they may have life and have it abundantly. And I think we need to understand, or I need to understand this whole passage in the context of Jesus coming, that we have life and have it abundantly. So in some sense or other, this is all about what abundant life is about. And, uh, and uh, again, earlier in that, the chapter in verse three, I think it is, she, we, he talks about the, the, the shepherd uh, knowing the sheep by name. And so in, in this passage, for me, the core is around uh, the, when Jesus talks about uh, the, he knows the father and the father knows him. So that's setting up uh, uh, a, a picture of, uh, of, of a, 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 a profound relationship between the father and the son. And we know he's already talked about knowing, meaning knowing by name, but it's also about knowing in, in, the, in the deepest sense of knowing another, knowing in completeness. So the father and the son know each other in completeness, in fullness. And so they are the, they are the em, embodiment that, that's the wrong word, isn't it? But they, they are the, 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 the fullness of the fullness of life is there in the father and the son and in their relationship. So he then says, and I, I, I know, or previously says, I know uh, uh, my own and they know me. So uh, just as the father and I know, uh, I know the father and the father knows me. So you've got this, this sort of parallelism between the relationship between Jesus and us and the relationship between Jesus and the father. Uh, now, uh, the just as is a very loose just as uh, because we don't know Jesus with the intimacy and the profoundness that Jesus knows the father and the father knows him. Uh, we know that Jesus knows us with that intimacy and profoundness. So what I then re recognize is that uh, the abundant life that we are being called into that he is giving us, being drawn into, is this process. Of course, at the heart of the, 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 the gift of the abundant life is him laying down his life and taking it up again, um, which he repeats, I think, three times in the passage. And uh, so for us, this is being, this is being drawn in to something that already exists, a relationship between the father and the son. And to be drawn into that in the deepest, deepest sense. Mm. So our whole the abundant life is living more and more deeply into our relationship with Jesus. Mm. Um, and you know, knowing that we are known by him and coming to know him not in just a just a kind of head knowledge way at all but the deepest way of knowing yeah so that's that's where i i i find it's an immensely powerful passage it would be a bit more powerful if we could read the whole chapter but um yeah and as you speak i'm thinking about that that verb knowing it doesn't really capture it does it in english because knowing can be such an abstract and cerebral concept but the in john's gospel and more widely in scripture knowing is about that 
intimate interactive relationship it's you know it, and it, it's too reductive isn't it to talk about knowing in english language it's a bit like saying that the baby with with a mother kind of like knows the mother and therefore grows but i mean it's a lot more than knowing it's it's an intersubjective constitution by, by relationship with if you know what i mean isn't it so it's uh, yeah, it's it's much more than that, which is why. And also you make me think of, you know, Paul's emphasis on the mind of Christ and putting on the mind of Christ, which is exactly that about that interactive relationship with the father that actually delivers a completely different way of being and acting and thinking. And I, and I yeah. saw th something I can't remember where I saw this, but 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 wanting to translate believing in Jesus, believing in him as believing into that there mm. was again there was this sense of there is a process a, 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 a progression a movement it wasn't simply okay yeah i believe in him tick that off but the, the you are growing into that relationship moving into that space yeah 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 no absolutely um so um i i, I really didn't have a particular main point to make so much as a few kind of like crumbs really to add to the feast you've already given us really martin so <laughs> i imagine your crumbs will be sizable cakes <laughs> so um so i mean just just looking at this passage uh, one of the interesting things about it is john's gospel doesn't contain any predictions of the passion mm -hmm. but this is it mm -hmm if you think about it isn't it this is his prediction of the passion put in in, in john's typically kind of poetic and, and and beautiful way which enables us to kind of like go a little bit deeper in terms of layering of our relationship with with the father this is the prediction of the passion so so if we think about it that way then we think about well yeah okay so who are the threats to the good shepherd well the threats to the shepherd are as usual uh wild animals and thieves they were so who are the wild animals and the thieves? Um, you know, the, 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 or, 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 well, maybe the wolf, for instance, is the agent of death. And maybe that stands for the power of the Romans. Yeah, maybe. Who are the, who are the hired hands in this? Maybe it's the priestly establishment, which would certainly echo the leaders who are not really leaders, who don't really care for the people that they lead. And you begin, can begin to see that this is at one level, a picture building up of, the, of, the, of a kind of like an allusion to the passion narrative, isn't it? But, but if it is, there's one major scene that's missing, and that's the great struggle and the actual yeah. dying and death, you know, the act of putting to death which of course the modern film industry would be focused on major league time, but that's the bit that isn't in it. So, you know, it's a, maybe it's an implicit crit critique of films like The Passion of the Christ, which for other reasons I think is a good film, but you know, it's interesting that, you know, that we don't have that here. Nevertheless, the shepherd does die, we hear, yeah? The shepherd lays down his life for the, the sheep. And as you say, there's this incredibly close father-son relationship that's uh, emphasized here that gobsmackingly is the potential for the sheep's relationship to the shepherd presumably precisely because yeah. of the cross yeah. because of the laying down of life and the taking it up again mm -hmm. and some people might say well what on earth is this passage doing in you know in easter season well, it's partly because it's an explanation of how cross and resurrection are about opening up to us the, the vistas of the father son relationship for ourselves in, in and through it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so um, so why in Easter season? I suppose, you know, partly death and resurrection for the purpose of the sheep. But there's also another bit which kind of gives us a task, isn't there? There's a bit about you know, I have other sheep who are not of this fold who I must bring in also, which kind of dovetails with passages like Matthew 28, 16 to 20, where the risen Lord turns and says to his disciples, go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, and that, again, is us putting on the mind of Christ, isn't it? It is acting instead in the stead of the good shepherd, in the power of the spirit of the good shepherd, in enabling uh, many more to be part of this flock. So bits and pieces all over the shop, really, for me. And so just just a, a kind of footnote or a, a, a reflection on that 
one of the things that's also striking to me, even in those points where we may have, uh, as it were, you said, a task, is that the agency resides with Jesus. So he, uh, and most extraordinarily, he lays down his life and will take it up again. Uh, so it, 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 we have this incredible picture of his, his complete agency, as it were, yeah. in that yeah. process. And I think that's, it, that's what we're being drawn into. We're being drawn into a life where we don't, you know, we don't have to think, oh, it's all up to us. It is yeah. all up to him. He has done all that we yeah. need to receive abundant life. Yeah, he knows what he's doing and we're to be yoked to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you.